with Jesse. We actually share the same last name, which is quite rare in Chinese because it's actually Lu, uh, not Lu. Yeah. Um, so tell me, you've raised almost twenty million dollars to create what you call the next generation mobile operating system. Um, what is the product, and how does it relate to AI and also art, which is an interest of yours? Right. So uh, try to you. I'm trying to give you a more clear uh, of what I'm trying to do. Uh, I'm not sure if, you, if any of you see a, a sci-fi movie related to the AI topic called Her, H-E-R. Right? So you, you all realize that, if you see the movie, you realize that uh, the character actually uh, talking to the computer, um, and the computer is more kind of like a, a real people feeling of that. It's not like today's uh, Atlas system. So that direction is what we're heading for. Uh, basically, what we're what we're trying to do is uh, we think the app will uh, will die uh, within five years, uh, within the next five years. So what I'm trying to build is a new system that for users, not only you can you can see something or you can just type something, but we're we're really focusing on uh, getting your service down. Okay, so we know there are a lot of similar products that are trying to this direction, such as Siri and Cortana. But, what, but that kind of AI system is basically just a redirecting you to a search engine. But what we're trying to do is, uh, if you want to do something, I hope the AI could actually trigger the service to get the things done. I really wish that we could just go ahead and demo the product somehow okay. on a big screen. Um, because in so many of your stories that you told me, it seems that you're really, again, focused on product. Um, and you raise money by showing the product to potential investors for literally less than 60 seconds. Um, and even in sort of getting into Y Combinator, that was a your story. Could you tell us a little bit more about that? Right, so basically, uh, um, I'm not good at making a keynote or PDF at all. So I think when I'm trying to uh, uh, tell something, tell, tell somebody uh, what I'm trying to do with it, the best way is to actually show you the product. I think you know, if, if you can get an intuitive impression of what I'm trying to do, uh, that makes more sense than like a whole bunch of tickets on the keynote. Actually, I can uh, show you now, but even it's not a big screen, but I think it makes sense. So basically, uh, basically, I think this is what your future phone will, will look like. It's a command line to interface, it's not an app anymore, uh, which means you can type and hold here to talk any command to the computer. For example, I'm trying to listen to a song, a uh, Chinese song maybe, I can just hold here and say, if I do, uh, I'd rather it starts playing. Okay, so, uh, it starts playing. So, uh, if you try to arrange a dinner with your friend, so here's your contact list, I can just say, uh, hi, Ray, what about dinner tonight? This, this will be just like a WeChat, but what she can do is, after she got this message, she, don't, she, uh, she will not need to download any other app because the system is based in cloud. So um, she will just hold, the, hold the, this uh, search key and say, find the nearest sushi bar, um, and there you go. See the list? And you can just pick any of this and get a Uber from here. It's already getting a taxi from here. Um, people's Uber, Uber Black, calling a taxi now. And right there, you should be getting a taxi. So it's really a platform that connecting all the major services through API. That's uh, we call Flow. How's it different from something like Operator? All right, I, I think I think that's very similar in, in the concept. Uh, I haven't got a chance to talk to the guys in Operator, but uh, they are more focusing on the business uh, uh, to to business, to business rather than to the customer. So they're actually making their own product as a unique SDK to be integrated to the different systems by other businesses. But what we are trying to focus in on is we're, we're really trying to deliver this product to the, to the, to the customers. Cool. So how old are you this year? Uh, 25. Uh, but I'll be 26 next month. So. Yeah. Could you tell us a bit about what it's like to be a young founder leading a company of you said 60 full-time employees plus staff here in Silicon Valley? Right. So uh, it's quite challenging, to be honest. Um, from my personal view, I define myself as a, still as a small kid. So um, I'm trying to be real, trying to live a lifestyle as a, uh, as the same age as, as, as our generation. So uh, talking about management, uh, it's kind of like a whole way of processing of learning how to adapt to the different characteristics. So 
Um, I would define the entire journey as a self, as a process of self-training. So, um, uh, on one hand, you you you're still a young kid. You, the majority of the business world is actually against you. So, uh, for example, when you trying to we 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 received multiple acquisition terms within one year and a half because the company is only one year and a half. Uh, so we are facing. We're look, looking at your in inbox and saying, okay, Microsoft actually trying to purchase you at a ridiculous high amount of price. That it actually confuses you. So uh, it's kind of like on one hand you are not familiar with any terms of the business world, but on the other hand, um, this is exactly your stuff, your thing. So you, you gotta you gotta do with your instinct. With your, you gotta do with your with your, all your passion. So I think it's kind of like the balancing between. Uh, a, a, an entrepreneur and, and, and a balance in between a young small kid. So on that note, could you tell us a bit about what actually drives you day to day? Because you mentioned to me, you know, I'm more interested in the spirit of pushing things forward than in... Okay, so, uh, um, I was very lucky. I, I was born in Xi'an, uh, uh, a central city in China. Uh, and. Uh, when I was very young, uh, I remember one of my relatives owned an arcade game store back in my hometown. So, uh, you know, we, we do Chinese, you know, in Chinese festival, we visit different relatives' home. So, every spring festival, I was waiting for that day to be able to play the arcade game store owned by my relative for, for, for like four weeks. So, um, I've been contacted by a computer when I was like around seven, or six or seven. So, it's also, it's the, that's the first time I see the computer. So after that, uh, I was extremely interested and fascinated by the machine, and uh, so I, I self-learning all the basic coding, all the basic knowledge of the computer uh, back then. So uh, it's kind of like uh, I they encountered into this area so early that I've been continuously focusing on the evolution of the operating system and the and the user experience. So I um, I did my university in UK, you know, so local. Um, and also, I participated in the, in the early, earlier alpha test of uh, a, a whole bunch of new devices like Google Glass, Oculus Rift, and Emotion. So I kind of like realized that every every ten years, um, the entire operating system gonna change completely, right? Like, well, we have the first time when I was actually playing with computer, it's actually Command Line Two, right? We don't have a mouse; it's Microsoft DOS or, or even earlier. So we're using program language to tell the computer to do our task. And later we have graphic user interface, we have the mouse, we point anywhere and we click without the result. And later we have this multicast screen that is your phone right now. Um, that's actually still graphic user interface. Um, um, just because your your finger becomes the mouse. So I think you can see a clear trend that we're swifting uh, between linguistic and graphic for every 10 years to the computer. Language and you, if you realize the AI topic today, extremely more, uh, especially for this year, you realize that a lot of designers are actually go back to the linguistic game, like Siri, like Campana. They actually try to make you come uh, having conversation like like the real people to your device. So um, I learned from playing, uh, and uh, I, I was uh, once I was a semi pro uh, e sports game, uh, player as well for Warcraft and Frozen Pro. So um, I couldn't distinguish very clear about my my interests or my just uh, my playground. I think those uh, just makes better. Uh, but uh, yeah, definitely uh, it is a passion thing now. So talk finally a little bit about China. Um, you view yourself as a pretty global citizen, right? Um, but how does China and specifically Beijing, which is to headquarter your company here? Fit into innovation on a global scale. Right, a lot of people are actually uh, asking uh, asking me the question that why are you actually moving back to Beijing? Um, and I have a perfect example. I think you know, um, although to be frank, a lot of a lot of a lot of things in China are not satisfied with the Chinese. Uh, but I think Beijing or China um, now is a more visited city or a more visited country than any other places in the world. I mean, I've been living in the Bay Area, I've been living in London, I've been living in uh, uh, Liverpool, UK. Um, but if, if, if you're hungry at 3 a.m. and you walk on the street, literally there's nothing you can buy. 
right? I think we all have the similar experience. But if you if you are hungry, three a.m. right here in sunny Twins, probably you got a traffic jam, right? Every day. So it, it tells you that you know you know China now are, are actually adapting more faster than any other places in the world because a lot of things are fucked up, which means a lot of a lot of new opportunities, right? So I think. Um, if you if you're gonna try something, if you're gonna try some ideas, especially uh, on mobile platform, you're gonna start from China, because uh, you know in China it's like crazy. Everybody has multiple smartphones. Everybody are you know socially are, are playing, are starting, are learning from mobile phones. So I think that's the best test field in the planet right now. Awesome. Any questions for Chang? All right, he doesn't come out of into public a lot to do stuff like this. So thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Thank you.